Welcome to worship at State Street United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Laura, and it is a joy to be gathered with you for worship and to share in worship today. As many of you may be aware, I have been away spending sacred time with my mother and with my family during my mother's final days, and she died on May the 6th. And I do want to express my gratitude to the State Street family for the compassion and the support that you have offered during that time. Thank you. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and we're celebrating the gift of the Holy Spirit as it infuses power into the church and into us, especially in those moments when we may feel discouraged or afraid. We can call upon and remember the Spirit. And so I hope and I pray that you, wherever you are, that all of us may receive a good dose of that Holy Spirit power as we worship today. Let's prepare our hearts for worship.
What a blessing to be able to go to God in prayer. We can know wherever we are, even if we're not able to see, be in the same room together. Our prayers can bind us to one another. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come again. As long ago, you inspired, astonished, and sometimes even confused the people. Come to us now to fill our ears with the sound of your breath, to fill our eyes with the brilliance of your presence, to fill our hearts with your good word. And today we pray, Lord, we pray, we pray for the people of God in every land, for witnesses who by their example show your steadfast love. And we pray who, for any who may feel estranged from your church. Have mercy upon us, O God, if there is any way we have made anyone feel unwelcome, and give us the strength to walk in your ways. And we pray for communities and families torn by violence, and especially today, our hearts go to the land where you walked this earth, to Jeru Jerusalem and to the people of Israel and Palestine, for those hurting and longing for peace. Make us instruments of your peace, O God. We pray for any whose way feels very dark today for all who are unemployed or underemployed, for those living on the streets, for everyone affected by divorce or separation, for people struggling with addiction, with anger, with fear, with illness. Bring your light, O oh God. And we pray for this community of faith, for those who come to worship every week, and for those who worship online, and for those who cannot come at all, for the young, for the old, for newcomers and long familiar faces, for those who are seeking to know you wherever they are, help us find our way, O oh God. And into your promises we entrust all those whose needs are known to us today and those whose needs are known only to you. Grace and peace to all we know comes through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is amazing to think of the ways that our gifts can be such a blessing to others. People fed, hearts uplifted, lives transformed, all through being able to pool our resources and serve our community through the work of the church. Thank you for the ways that you share your gifts with State Street United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Holy God, bestow your Holy Spirit power on us as a church as we seek to be, bring blessing to others through the gifts that we receive. Make us instruments of your love and power and grace. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen.
Hear this reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Hear the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Each of them Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit power, come upon us as we reflect upon your word. Make it be for each and every one of us, wherever we are, your word offered for us this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. My father was a huge NASCAR fan. He never went to one of the Bristol races in person, but he did watch them and all of the NASCAR races faithfully on TV. And one of his regular rituals was to go out to the bridge over the interstate at the Emory exit off of I-81 he would go there after a race and he would count the number of RVs that went by. And it was fun to see how excited this college history professor would get about reporting the results to me after each race. Like many people, I think my dad enjoyed NASCAR so much because of the cars. There's something about the thrill that comes after that Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. 
the dropping of that starter flag, and they're off. The roar, the going from sitting still to the explosion of that power. Now, I am not at all mechanically minded, so I don't understand anything about how it works. But there's just something truly extraordinary about the internal combustion engine. Somehow, fuel ignites, combustion happens. Without the ignition, there is no movement. And without the combustion, there is no power. And I wonder if that's how those who were eyewitnesses to the Pentecost experience that was shared in our scripture today, I wonder if that's how they felt. Ignition, combustion, and we're off. Let's think about what was happening. It was the day of Pentecost and the followers of Jesus were gathered together. We need to understand that this really wasn't anything special. Pentecost was already a regular celebration in the life of a faithful Jewish believer. Also known as the Feast of Weeks, it was one of three pilgrimage feasts when many would make the journey to Jerusalem to be together for worship and for fellowship. This festival came 50 days after the Passover festival, and it celebrated the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, and also was a harvest celebration. So that was going on around the followers of Jesus where they were in Jerusalem, kind of like we might feel here in Bristol when a NASCAR race is going on or Rhythm and Roots or another kind of festival. When you live here, there may be a lot of extra people, but it doesn't have quite the same kind of excitement and anticipation as it does for those for whom it's a destination event. Now let's think a little bit about that phrase. They were all together in one place. The they is the followers of Jesus. The ones we know as the 11, without Judas being included. But there were also certainly others. Probably Mary Magdalene and some of the women who had also walked with Jesus. Others who had come on board. We, maybe we can imagine that some of the folks whom Jesus healed were there in that room. Some in the room had witnessed Jesus' appearances after his death, and they were all doing what Jesus had told them to do. He had told them to stay in Jerusalem, to wait for the promises to be revealed. But it's doubtful that they were feeling very confident. How much could they trust what they had seen or been told by Jesus. The fact that their leader had been sentenced to death and crucified, they had to still carry a lot of fear that their lives too could be in danger. And this was not a large crowd. They were a small group. So when that rumble started, the rush of a violent wind that filled the house where they were. When they looked around and saw tongues of fire on the heads of their friends. When they heard everyone start talking in a language that was not their own. It had to have been like an ignition, a combustion. Boom, here we go. This is what we've been waiting for. This is what it's all about. And that's why we call Pentecost Sunday the birthday of the church. Because this is the day when the torch is passed. From this point, this small band of huddled and frightened people become leaders and gospel proclaimers and missionaries and evangelists and healers themselves. No longer were they just following along wherever Jesus took them. Now they are the drivers. 
ignition, combustion, and we're off. We talk about Easter as the day of resurrection, but Pentecost is also another kind of day of resurrection. Pentecost is about the resurrection of the church. Because of Pentecost, the church emerged victorious from its own kind of death, from its own kind of hopelessness. Because of Pentecost, the church was given the gift of the Spirit, a gift that brings life, not just beyond the grave, but now, today. Because in many ways, the church was kind of dead before Pentecost. With Pentecost, there came new life. Pentecost infused these early believers with Holy Spirit power. We need a good dose of that Pentecost spirit today, don't we? We may feel a lot like those disciples felt before Pentecost. Our pandemic days have weighed us down with death and with loss and with restrictions. And I'm not just talking about the more than 586,000 people in the United States who have died from this devastating disease. But we too, we too have been huddled in fear we too may feel like a small band of disciples and believers. We haven't been able to gather, not just at church, but even with our families, with our friends, and we don't even know what has happened to some. There's no way we can even share what we've all been through. We're scattered. We're seeking our way. And maybe it would be good for us to remember that we are not the first believers who have faced these kinds of challenges. And maybe it would be good for us to remember that these early followers of Jesus must too have felt like they lost their way. And maybe we also need to remember that things could have gone a lot differently this small band of followers that were gathered in Jerusalem, they could have responded in a very different way to this Holy Spirit power. They could have acted differently when they were seeing this Spirit invade their space and enter into their hearts. What if when the disciples saw that the noise this spirit was making was drawing a crowd like it did, what if, instead of throwing open the doors, what if they had locked people out? What if Peter, when he heard people sneering and criticizing them, accusing them of being drunk, what if instead of courageously proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and the fulfillment of God's promises, what if Peter had suggested that they keep the noise down so as not to rile anybody up? Let's remember who this Peter is who is finding this courage. This is the same Peter who really not that many days earlier had been so fearful that he had denied he even knew Jesus. Let's remember that among the many things that Pentecost brings, Pentecost brings the power of redemption, reminding us that even if we failed before, even if we've messed up before, even if we've strayed before, there is still hope for us. And what if, when everyone started speaking in a language that was not their own, what if people had started silencing each other? Or what if people had silenced themselves? What if people had squelched their gift? either judge that some were not worthy to be shared or maybe they didn't feel they were worthy themselves. 
What if they'd insisted that everyone needs to speak the same language, at least as long as it's mine? What if? Barbara Brown Taylor suggests if things had happened differently for those Pentecost believers, they might have gone on the way they had been going. They might have established a church, but this church would essentially have been a hideout, a place for threatened and like-minded people to get together and agree on everything that was wrong outside while they held themselves apart from the baffling world in which they lived. What if? But thankfully, thank God, and we give God all the power and all the glory, thankfully, they didn't. Thankfully, they received, they honored the gift of that Pentecost power. Maybe we need a good dose of that Pentecost spirit to remember who we are and whose we are. And in many ways, we have. We've still tried to be faithful. We've kept worshiping, we've kept praying, we've been working hard to keep the church going under incredibly challenging conditions. It's pretty extraordinary when you think about it, how we have kept going. But here we are. We've got people here in person, we have an online community that brings people together in new ways and extends across barriers of time and of space. There are stories we don't even know about how we are reaching people. There is extraordinary faithfulness in this community and each of you are part of it. And each of you has something to offer wherever you are. But there is still a lot to do. We still need that Pentecost power. And in those moments when we get discouraged or wonder if there's anything we can do, maybe we need to remember how the church was born and allow ourselves to be infused with that same spirit, to keep our eyes and our ears open, knowing God is on the move to trust when we are faithful, God is faithful too. And God can work miracles. Ignition, combustion, and we're off. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we do emerge from times of so much fear and uncertainty and so many ways that we have been challenged and we know we'll continue to face challenges, remind us of your Holy Spirit power. Remind us of the ways that you can help us through and give us courage. Keep us on your path as we seek to follow you. Infuse us with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.
thank you for being part of our online worshiping community today. If you do live in the Bristol area and feel comfortable coming in person, we're here for worship every Sunday at 901 in the Fellowship Hall and at 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary. We also have a recovery program that's offered on Thursdays at seven o'clock, also in the Fellowship Hall. And our recovery program is both online and in person. We're always seeking that Holy Spirit power. And I do pray that the Lord may bless you and keep you. I pray that the Lord may make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And I pray that the Lord may lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.